most uh, the characters that each player is known the mo most for in this game. Wadi's Rob and Jake with the Steve. Yeah, uh, I definitely agree with Helvet. Uh, actually, to summarize a little tangent that we talked about, it's even if it's bad for the character and bad overall, it doesn't necessarily mean it's worse in the game. It's just not as good as compared to other characters in that specific option. And I do agree with Leo. Byleth's Tether is probably one of the best tethers in the game. It goes the deepest in the game out of all the characters for sure. Uh, but no more tethers here, man. We do have Wadi and Jake. And of course, you know Wadi's game plan against his character. So we're going to try to camp him out. But also, you know, trying to give him a couple lasers and Jake's game plan remains the same, man. You have a pretty strong neutral when you're just able to mine out materials that you need to win the game. Yeah, right now, Wadi is trying to just deal with pressuring Jake from afar so he's not able to get very many resources. And Jake's not even gotten, like, steel or anything yet. Yeah. Double roll here, and that's good for Wadi just in that case because you know you'll want to avoid all the up tilts. Jake goes for up tilts specifically because Rob is a huge hurt box, and you can punish somebody for that. Oh, we got wow. high beam. Oof, but didn't get enough of the hits there to drag him fully off stage. But so far, Wadi's in the driver's seat. But Jake getting one of those pick loop uh, up tilt sequences. Yeah, it's a down throw. Wait, that was good for going for up tilt. That's usually the best option, and Jake was now actually able to avoid that because that would have been up tilt up air. Back throw? Oh, good back throw here. Uh, Wadi was always in danger of losing its stock just because of the, plat the little platform off the side of Town City, which is infamous for its very short uh, stage to blast zone size. Oh, got caught Wadi oh, in the cart no. and nailed him yeah. to fair. No spike, but sent him all the way to the side blast zone. Yeah, I talked about this before. If you mash out late, you will get followed up by the axe. And that, okay, I'm sorry, excuse me. Who let this man hit this, like, uh, carry this man across the stage? Okay, Wadi responds. I'm sorry, I almost lost my words, because, like, Wadi was literally about to just die from double up air to mine yeah. cart. And that would have definitely hurt my soul. Oh, the Nair did. <laughs> uh, JJ and stretchered there for a brief minute by the Town City platforms. Wadi right now trying to fire back here. Jay taking the time to get some resources, but it's punished for it. Big laser coming out. Late Nair. And Jake trying to get the cart in. The cart doesn't quite work, but does get the fair to work. Look at how many hitboxes the cart eats. That was like a laser and the, uh, the gyro. Jesus. Big back here from Wadi. Not quite enough to take care of Jake. Yeah. You can tell that Wadi's just trying to set up each projectile. Just cart, trying to get Jake at an angle we can actually punish. Wow. Even on Town and City. I think Wadi accidentally shifted his hurt box towards the blast zone. Trying yeah, to he avoid might have that. Jumped, yeah. in, jumped into it when the momentum was carrying him through. But right now, Jay trying to hold on the stock and put as much of a lead together. Oh, he might just get it. This might be a 60 percenter. Oh, we got the cart to go up, but the full charge laser saved Wadi briefly. Oh, we missed grab here, and that's kind of crucial for Wadi here. 160, sorry, 138 to 55. Wadi just looking for an opportunity. Down throw. This is a confirm if he can pull it off. Great DI played fake. Oh my God, he saved himself there. Oh, but the uh, second up air, because again, while it kind of seems like Isabelle's um, fishing line as well, the the grab from Steve does not actually extend below like platforms like that. Right now, last stock situation. Both plays all oh, the no. big swing F smash, and that's going to do it. It's just so unexpected how much power Steve can generate with that F smash. <laughs> Honestly. I'm not surprised. I know it's Diamond Sword, but right. Spot Dodge F Smash for Steve is such a common option in his way to punish you for going for something committal. And it makes sense, man. I, I, I'm actually surprised Sakurai didn't say like, yo, well, you know what would be crazy? If we actually let Steve mine out armor, that would have been ridiculous. Cause you, a lot of people don't know that in don't Minecraft. Give ideas. <laughs> a lot of people don't know it in, in Minecraft, man. You can actually like create armor so that would have been busted if Steve could actually mine out armor, and I'm glad they didn't choose that. All right, game two. Let's see if Wadi's figured something out to uh, try to catch up with Jake in his lead here. If Jake can extend it against the Rob Mask. Three, two, one, go! We're on FD this time. See, so, yeah, I like the decision that Wadi made to just attack the the pillar, the pillar of blocks, but second time around, Jake was kind of ready for his approach. I think Nick District has a really good point here. A lot of people say like, wow, who designed Steve? 
despite the fact that we love Smash Ultimate for being a competitive fighting game, at the end of the day, its original design was for a competitive party game. That's that's why some characters come off the way that they are. There was more of a party mode aspect first, competitive nature second. Totally. But nonetheless, though, right now, Wadi's right trying now. to party his way with a near off stage and just barely with and probably would have sent Jake into a big, uh, bad position. Jake right now trying to chase down Wadi. Shiro's had so much knockback. Oh, Minecart caught Wadi just as he was getting ready to side beat Jake, probably, possibly the blast of Big Minecart yet again. Jake just keeps on getting these resources to trade positively with Minecart and take more and more space and get the stock. Wadi still hasn't figured out what to do about Minecart, pretty much. <laughs> and to be fair, it does not seem like there's a lot you can do about it. Steve will not be denied. Oh, what a good decision there by Jake to selectively mash out at the end. Nice escape again. And just look at how much damage Jake's put on here. Full rage, Steve rage. Oh, he's trying to set up the trap there. Not quite going to get it. Look at how many hitboxes he can put on. He's making Wadi use up all that fuel. Oh, and the decision to grab. Jake's almost in Wadi's head right now. Again with the cart. Can Wadi figure out some kind of advantage here? Not let Jake run away with this game too. Oh, the big up smash scoop. Vance, what do you think Wadi's gonna have to do now? It's kind of rough too, just because in a situation where you're trying to set up your projectiles to kind of force interactions, uh, Jake can just mine out for materials. And even then, like I said, if you're going for a projectile, the one thing that Steve or and Alex have as a whole is they have minecart in which you, they can use to easily close the gap or punish you for going for set projectile. I'll never forget that projectiles do have startup lag. And that's kind of the one thing that supplements them in terms of balance. So by that, you know, interaction, of course, like, you know, that if, you know, gold mine, mine cart comes out, that'll punish Wadi for going for gyro and laser. And those are tools in neutral that Rob really wants to always have out. But when you're getting punished for it, you have to really consider what's your best option there. Because even look at that situation, he oh. has all the tools set up and Jake can still slip through the cracks with mine cart. This whole interaction right now has actually got started up by Jake having a really negative uh, interaction. Oh, oh no. no! The classic spot toss forward smash. There was Not at least three times in that match where Wadi had the startup for an aerial and Jake had an option that beat him out that just led to so much damage or the stock. And that's the matchup. Yeah. It's, it's hard, man. Like, I'm telling you, you... This is that was a situation where maybe Wadi should have thought of a projectile, but when you think about conditioning that you're taking, it's the conditioning that Wadi has already been taking in general from from Jake. Yeah. It's like he knows if I go for projectile, the thing that's going to hit me is minecart, and if not minecart, then Steve with an aerial. So it's really difficult to kind of evaluate that, and that puts Wadi literally in kind of a tough spot. Options that would be really viable in neutral. Oh suddenly aren't so viable anymore against the character but uh what are definitely gonna coming out exactly uh definitely gonna put mewtwo out of the master ball and see what he can do here and what is hopefully not the last game between these two so what do you think mewtwo affords him that rob doesn't honestly speed and pressure rob isn't necessarily that fast i'm not gonna tell you he's slow but compared to the two look at the range that you already have with mewtwo <laughs> Tail yeah, is practically a sword. Already. Yeah, Tail is practically a sword. You do have better combos with Mewtwo at most percents rather than just trying to get like up tilt up air, at which you know Jake is going to immediately have to properly mash out to escape that. But also, you oh, have a, a really good forward air. Yeah. Oh, what an aggressive teleport to fair there by Wadi. That was such a good option. Yeah, and Wadi not right only now that, in the driver's seat. Yeah. Oh, speaking of being in the driver's seat, you don't want to be in the driver's seat of Minecart. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you don't want to be. That's a down throw. Wadi's going to win. That was good for Wadi. Didn't panic because normally somebody would panic and Steve would catch that. But unfortunately, too much respect on the minecart. That's the last thing you want to do against something like a projectile is roll, because that's what your opponent usually wanted you to do is to punish that roll. You know Mewtwo goes for Shadow Ball for that reason, too. Ooh, Forward air will take it, and Wadi with two stocks on the lead here. Wadi might have figured out something here with the mix-up. Oh, big strikes here from Jake. He's gonna try to. Oh, he almost wafted Wadi across stage there. Yeah. Wadi knows that I have to hold the trigger on confusion, specifically because you know that Jake is gonna jump out of minecart because he can punish you for trying to confusion minecart. So Wadi will know, okay, hold on to confusion as a very, very last ditch effort. 
Yeah, it's good there. Almost a out minding there. But, oh, big shadow ball. And the reason why it's that shadow ball is exit at the ledge because you can call out rolls. Oh no, yeah, Mitsu's oh, like no. You have to be so careful when you're D out, when you're mashing out to not mash out towards Steve. And even if you mash out away, Steve has a follow up to call that out. Exactly. You know? You have to really mash out properly against minecart in general. Oh, yeah, the confusion to try to get Nair, but that's a, something caught, caught, caught him. Not even actually in the minecart. It doesn't matter, though. Big trigger on the uh, Shadow Ball and why he takes the stock here. We're getting a game four between these two. It looks like Mewtwo was the was a, the switch to Mewtwo was a good uh, good call. Yeah, like I said, you have the tail, which is basically a sword. You have the tools to kind of pressure better. Um, and it's not that Rob doesn't have good pressure tools. It's just look at the way that he had been conditioned from from Jake, right? Every time he wants to go for laser, he needs gyro. Every time he wants to go for gyro, he's got to worry about a million, like not a million different things, but he's got to worry about Jake just calling him out for those tools. Mewtwo right. has the speed and the movement to kind of get in and out of pretty much Jake as a whole, because that's the way how he's playing with Steve. Yeah, I mean, the only thing Wadi has to worry about is not getting caught out too much for when his aggressive advantage state winds up whiffing and he did a really good job there just holding on long enough but man that difference seems razor thin let's see if jake figures out a solution to the mewtwo or if wadi's figured out a key to this matchup yeah and honestly it's just he is able to play the distance game and the up close range game as well i'm not saying rob can't do that because honestly if, if anybody wonders about my opinions on rob that character cheats but <laughs> Wadi as a whole, like you can see just how much better he's able to play this matchup. Uh, he has better combos, and that's what you kind of want against a character like Steve. You don't want to go for those small hits. You want to go for the full combo that you know is guaranteed most of the time. Not only at certain percent, but man, what a carry all the way from Steve. He immediately gets the up smash. I said, I do like Wadi trying to attack the bottom blocks to start things off here. Jake, though, still getting enough time to get several materials but here comes wadi nice jab catching jake oh no but jake gets jake uses the block he sent up in order to make the knockback work oh. and the big up smash oh what a call out yeah being cool. on it's it's tough too because wadi's reaction is avoid going for a roll because of anvil on the way that jake is facing so if wadi would have gone for a roll that would have been punished i think it might be something of a, a a habit that jake started to pick up on wadi because he tried to set up the same thing right there just a moment ago. Oh, the Elytra, remember, has a hitbox. You have to be careful about that. Yeah. Only starting hitbox, not ending. And oh. quick confusion at the close oh. range. We talked about how Wadi is saving that trigger only in situations where it really matters the most. I'm so surprised Wadi managed to still get that Shadow Ball off because I thought Jake was in range. <laughs> oh. Okay, Wadi. Yeah, that was a, I have to that give him credit, up. yeah. Oh, no. No back air. Yeah, you have to watch out for minecart there. It's really hard, too, because when you want to punish Jake for being off stage at a higher angle, the first thing that's coming is powered minecart or just minecart as a whole. And it really forces you to kind of like, OK, I should actually just wait for Jake's reaction. And without powered minecart, you know that Wadi can punish that. So it's going to be up to Wadi to kind of guess, not necessarily guess the timing, but change the timing on trying to punish Jake. Finally, Wadi gets some kind of follow up off Nair. He's been landing his Nair successfully for a bit. Oh, he just. He eats a big punish for whiffing one. That's just the story of this match so far. Jake getting these giant haymakers in, man. And Wadi just can't contest them. Oh, but Wadi's striking right back. We have a last stop situation. Wadi immediately punishing the crafting table. But Jake's got Wadi off stage. Built a wall. He's a trap. Oh, but Wadi expertly stalling enough, enough to teleport back to stage. This is bad for Wadi, though. Calling out Jake in the startup of Card Dan. Shadow Ball to work. Big fair, but it was a trade. Jake actually getting the benefit of the doubt there. Trying to drop the anvil. Oh, the Shadow Ball gets eaten up by the minecart again. The minecart is just the bane of Wadi's existence right now. Big dash attack. Wadi looking for the kill here, trying to set up a big Shadow Ball punish. Jake, all he needs with this diamond axe is one big F smash for big back air, and he gets it! Oh, that's gonna do it! Wadi was so close to bringing that back, but Jake, just relentless with the pick. Gonna take it with a 3 1. 